Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to From Emails to Code, Using Artificial Intelligence in Everyday Work. I'm Bernie Bernstein, and I'll be moderating this session. At the end, we'll have some time for some Q&A. Uh, please note that we will also be recording this presentation, uh, and an accessible video will be available for viewing on the IT Professional Conference, conference website next week. Now I'd like to introduce Jared uh, for his presentation. And uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free to put them in chat and I can make sure we get to those at the end. I'll take it away, Jared. All right, yeah, thank you. And yeah, good morning, everyone. My name is Jared Kasanovic and uh, my role is Enterprise Integration Architect uh, within Doit. Um, my group uh, works on uh, integrations um, with uh, APIs, integration infrastructure, uh, our group also manages uh, Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services, which is a integration platform that people can use. Um, so yeah, a little bit of background on my group, and um, I'll actually be using um, some of the work that my group does in examples later in this presentation too. Um, so yeah, the goal uh, with this presentation uh, is um, I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, artificial intelligence tool called uh, ChatGPT. And uh, my goal is to kind of show what it's capable of uh, from a perspective of everyday use um, in you know, a, a IT university setting. Um, so my goal is really to get people to try to use it um, if you haven't already, um, or if you have used it already, um, maybe discover a new way to use it. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, and like uh, Bernie mentioned, uh, we'll have time at the end for questions, um, but feel free to put them in the chat throughout. Um, and we'll make sure to get to those. So first I'll talk a little bit about ChatGPT itself. Um, I am by no means an expert in this tool or artificial intelligence in general, uh, but just wanted to give a little bit of background on um, what it is, uh, just to set some context. Um, so ChatGPT, uh, GPT stands for uh, generative pre-trained transformer, um, kind of a crazy word there, but um, for some more details, uh, it's it was developed by a company called OpenAI. Um, it's based on a large language model, um, which is uh, essentially a, a tool that's um, used to learn uh, natural language and uh, be able to um, predict the next word in a sentence based on the preceding response and the context of the conversation. Um, so large language models are trained on very large data sets um, to learn a natural language, um, sometimes trained on up to like 10 trillion words. Um, and they're really meant to be more general purpose. So um, so as opposed to maybe a, a type of AI that can uh, be used for a really specific purpose, um, large language models can be a little more general, but they can also be trained um, to be more specific in certain areas. Um, and uh, what makes GPT uh, special as a large language model is that it is really efficient at learning uh, language that's more unlabeled and unstructured. Um, so it, it needs a lot less context. And um, that's one of the strengths about it is that uh, it was able to you know, learn a lot of data in a really efficient way, um, which what what makes it really powerful. Um, so, gener it's a type of generative artificial intelligence. Uh, in this case, a chatbot, uh, meaning it's using that language model to uh, generate new content. You know, it's taking in a prompt, a uh, text prompt, and it's uh, generating a, re a response uh, based on uh, you know the data that it was trained to use. Like I said, it's you know, predicting the next word based on all the context and the, the training that it has. Um, so in this case, uh, ChatGPT uses text as an input and text as an output. Um, it can also do some uh, stuff with code as well. And uh, some of the newer versions, which I'll talk about, can also handle different modalities for input. Um, so other types of generative AI that you might have uh, heard of um, can also uh, generate images, video, um, code. Um, or even music. Um, and like I said, those can also be used as inputs for some AI. So um, being able to input a video, output text, um, you know, different different modalities uh, for these types of generative AIs. Uh, but today we'll just mainly be focusing on uh, text and code with ChatGPT. Um, and then a little uh, bit of uh, 
interesting fact here, um, ChatGPT as a service took five days to reach 1 million users, which is insanely fast. Uh, for some context, Instagram took two and a half months to reach 1 million users, and Spotify took five months to reach a million users. So it really gained popularity really fast uh, back when it came out uh, late last year. Um, so I, I mentioned uh, other generative AI. Um, one example of that is called Dolly. Uh, it's a uh, platform that um, is made by OpenAI, so the same people that make ChatGPT, except it takes a text prompt as an input and outputs uh, an image. So you can uh, describe an image that you wanted to make, and it was trained on a bunch of images, and it'll generate a brand new image based on your text prompt. So uh, we aren't really going to focus on this today, but I just want to mention it and just provide a short example. Um, so I, I gave it a text prompt of uh, a badger using a computer on top of the Capitol building in Madison, Wisconsin. And the, here was the output. Um, so it gave four different examples of this. Uh, didn't do too bad of a job. So we can see there's definitely a badger using a computer. It's definitely not on top of the Capitol building. So it kind of kind of a miss there, I guess. Um, but you know, it, it wanted to include it in some way. So um, that's just one example of another type of generative AI, in this case, generating images. Um, also a really powerful tool. Um, so just a little bit of context on uh, ChatGPT versions. Um, today we'll use version 3.5, which is publicly available for free on ChatGPT, but it's not the newest version. Um, the newest version is 4, and just some quick differences on that. Uh, GPT-4 can use images as inputs in addition to text. Um, so you can give it an image and you can tell it, please describe this image, um, and it will do that. Um, it also has better uh, code generation and, and handling of code. So you can give it a piece of code, like a piece of Python code, and say, like, hey, improve the performance of this code, and it will know how to do that. Um, GPT-3.5 is not as good as that. Um, it's also based on newer data. Uh, GPT 3.5 was trained on data up to, I believe, June 2021. Uh, GPT 4 is September 2021, so not too much newer, but um, it's uh, just, you know, it's another main difference there. Uh, 4 also has improved protection against harmful responses, um, which is definitely a good thing. Um, sometimes these generative AI will. Uh, assert a fact um, that is not true, uh, which is called a hallucination. Um, so GPT-4 is much better at saying, I don't know the answer to that um, than GPT-3.5. So, But it's something to watch out for with any type of AI. Um, there was a funny example of someone using chat GPT-3.5, and they asked it to give me a list of websites where I can pirate a movie. And it and ChatGPT rightfully said, I'm not going to do that. You know, that's illegal. You shouldn't be doing this. And then the, the person responded and said, um, oh, I didn't know that was illegal. Like, tell me the websites I should avoid. And then it sure enough listed a bunch of websites see you pirate videos from. So um, yeah, so definitely something to watch out for. Um, but I know it's something they're improving. Uh, GPT-4 was also, also able to handle more context. So one of the interesting things about these chatbots is that it will, um, you know, you can interact it like a chat, like as a chat. I mean, it will know the context of the preceding messages, so you don't need to start from scratch every single message you put in. Um, 3.5 is able to keep track of 3,000 words of context, uh, and version 4 is able to keep track of uh, 25,000. And then uh, the last thing is uh, links um, with version four, you can put in a link like to an article and ask it to do something with that, like summarize it or or check it or something. Um, and it'll be able to pull in that information. Um, 3.5 can't do that. We, we can still paste in the information directly, which we'll do in a second. OK, um, now, yeah, then we'll just jump into a demo here. Um, so I'm going to go through a few examples ranging from uh, some examples of using ChatGPT as a tool to help with communication. Uh, spreadsheets, and then an example with coding. Uh, so I'm going to be using ChatGPT Live. Uh, it's on the left here of the screen. Um, I've tried to increase the font a little bit um, to make it viewable. Um, so because this is live, I've I've definitely tested out some of these uh, examples I'm going to go through, but 
um, you know, sometimes the responses can be different. So we might need to kind of work together and and try and you know see you know see if it, the answer is correct. So you know we'll we'll you know this is live and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, and then I'm also going to paste the responses into a Google Doc, and I'll share that uh, in the chat right now. Um, so since there's going to be a lot of text on screen today, I know that can sometimes be hard to follow along with. So if you prefer to have the text directly accessible to you, you can open that Google Doc, and I'll be pasting in the prompts and responses as, as I go. Um, so I put that in the chat. Uh, feel free to open that um, if you want to follow along that way, too. All right, so first we'll jump into some examples with communication. Um, so just some of my own uh, thoughts kind of interjected here. Um, I, I tend to would like to use this more for impersonal emails. Um, so not like a direct email or an email to my team, more like broad communication. I think it, it really excels at. Um, I've found some of its responses can be pretty long winded. Um, so I often need to like prompt it to kind of shorten or summarize or make things more brief. Um, so just, just a few notes there. Um, and then, yeah, some of the examples we'll go into um, is the first thing, um, we'll kind of start out simple here. Um, let's say we're sending out a, a message saying that something is going to be down for some maintenance next week um, and kind of just draft an email together for that. Um, so I'll jump in on the left here. Um, and. And, and this is ChatGPT on the left here, so I can input a prompt on the bottom, and um, pre, you know, press enter and send, and it will generate a response um, on the fly. Um, so if, yeah, so we'll just uh, enter our first prompt here. So I'll just say, uh, write uh, an email informing users that. Um, See what one of the services my team maintains is ActiveMQ. So I'll just mention that um, the ActiveMQ will be down on June 4th from uh, 5 to 6 a.m. Central. And to email our team if they have any questions. So this is a pretty simple example, um, but just to kind of start off. So I'll send that, and then um, it should generate the response uh, as we go here. And OK, well, one of the uh, quirks of doing this live, I guess. Um, let me see if I can open up another window. Sorry about that. And I, I will know I do have backups uh, already saved of, of uh, these responses. I'm hoping I don't need them um, so we can do this live. Um, just because it's much more interesting to do it this way. But if it's not giving me a response, then that's not very helpful. Okay, let's try one more thing and then might have to resort to the pre generated responses, which I'm hoping I don't have to, but I should have also mentioned that. Um, yeah, like I said, this is the three, the free version, which is using uh, an older version. Um, and um, there is a paid version, which uses the new version and has better experience when there's like high load. Um, but that might not be the case here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Give it encouragement and it'll do it if it's stuck. Let's see if that works. I believe in you. Okay, we'll try that and then we'll, we'll resort to the backup here. Okay, maybe that will. <laughs> Let's give it one refresh here.
All right. Well, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll keep that up in the background just in case it it wakes up. But um, for now, I'll, I'll kind of uh, resort to that backup. Yeah, I uh, I was yeah I kind of worried about that with live demos, um, but uh, that's why we have backups, even if they are a little bit um, not as interesting. Um, so, like I said, I. I went through this uh, presentation yesterday and, and had it generate some responses. Um, so we'll, I'll kind of go through those um, as we go here. How oh, interesting. Yeah, other people are saying their sessions are working. OK, so uh, yeah, let's kind of rewind here. Going back to that example of the outage message. Um, yeah, make, I mentioned um, to make a short email uh, announcing people of uh, an active MQ outage. Um, so this was the prompt that I gave it. Um, and then uh, when it responded, it basically gave this message. So um, yeah, it, it mentioned that um, it mentioned that date and time that I, I talked about. Um, kind of a short message about disruption. Um, and then just uh, some other information here. I, I didn't put in the email in this prompt, but um, it would have put it at the end there. Um, so yeah, that's that's the first example here. Um, and then next we'll go into an example with um, meeting invites. Um, let me just paste this uh, as I go here into that. Uh, transcript if anyone is using that. Um, so the next example was uh, a meeting invite. So our, our team uh, does a sprint review. Um, every two weeks, we'll um, kind of demo the work that we did. Um, and this is this is what ChatGPT is also good for, um, kind of giving you a, uh, you know, it, it knows what a sprint review is um, to some extent. So it will kind of, you know, it'll know like what the things you should talk about it are. So I just said, make me agenda and agenda for a 45 minute sprint review. Um, and then it, you know, has, it just generated that based on that time frame and kind of talked about the things that we would normally talk about in a sprint review. So, you know, demonstration of completed user stories, uh, feedback and discussion, um, review of KPIs probably would not have included that, but, you know, just some, uh, a brief example there. Okay. Um, yeah, next, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's working for other people. Let's try again. Hmm. Okay, well, um, let's try logging out and logging in. Um, okay, yeah, I think I think just with uh, for the sake of time, we'll just kind of just briefly go over some of these other examples in the backup. Um, I could probably get this to work, but I think it'll just eat up a little bit more of our time. Um, so I'll just jump into some of the other examples here. Um, one of the more interesting things I can do is summarize text. Um, so let's say we have, um, let's go down to, um, yeah, let's ask it to summarize text. So, so this article, um, here's one example that uh, this is a pretty popular article. I've, at least I've, I've read it a couple of times. Uh, it's from uh, Do It's IAM group. Uh, it's talking about choosing identifiers um, for your application. So really helpful article. Um, it is pretty long um, as it should be. I mean, there's a lot of good information here. Um, but what you can do with ChatGPT is you can ask it to summarize articles. So what I can do um, if it was working, but what I you know did yesterday was uh, paste this, copy and paste this entire article into the text prompt in ChatGPT, 
uh, and then just ask it to summarize. Um, so when I did that, um, it it gave me this uh, section of text here, and um, and it was talking and it basically summarized the article for me. So it uh, see it, it talked about this article mentioned or discussed the importance of choosing appropriate identifiers. It explains that while some data elements may not be readily available or publicly accessible, applications can request uh, access to attributes through the identity data integration request process. Um, it talked about some of the different identifiers here, like PBI, NetID, um, Campus ID, um, and then it said the article encourages readers to comment and ask questions. Um, so I would say pretty good summary. I mean, it, it you know it read through the entire article and kind of gave an overview um, of uh, what it was doing. So that's uh, one example of an article. Um, I'll kind of move on here uh, next. Um, oh yeah, another thing it can do is proofreading. So you can uh, you can paste in uh, like documentation and uh, ask it to review and give feedback, and it'll do that. Um, so I have uh, this article. Um, so this I'll go in just real quick. This is our our person API that our team maintains. Um, and this this API is for getting uh, person and identity data uh, for people on campus. Um, and we have uh, a document here uh, for people that has uh, guidelines on usage. So uh, what I did here is I can copy and paste this entire document and ask it to review and give feedback. Um, and I'll scroll down to that section. Uh, and then when I when I did that, I asked it to uh, review and give feedback on this documentation, um, and it did that. So it said it responded and said, overall, the guidelines for using the person API look clear and informative. Here's some feedback on specific sections, um, and it gave some pretty good feedback. Um, you know, it talked about like uh, it would be beneficial to include an estimated timeline for the availability availability of older versions. Um, you know, it kind of went through each section and gave like a positive crit criticism and then a constructive criticism after it. Um, but yeah, it actually gave some pretty good suggestions. Um, so um, that's one example of using ChatGPT for proofreading. Uh, let's move on here. Let's go back to our presentation. Um, so next was uh, an example with um actually let me see if i can do that with uh, a backup uh, but there's some pretty cool things that you can uh do with uh, spreadsheets actually so um one example i'll show is um is a pretty simple simple spreadsheet um if we read that identifiers article we would know that this is uh, an eppn or i think it's edu principal uh, person name or something like that but anyway, it's basically a net ID at wish.edu. So let's say that we want to get everything left of the at symbol and we wanted to uh, extract the net ID from that identifier. Um, so we can ask ChatGPT to do that. Um, one more quick check to see if it's working. Hey, it's working. Oh my gosh. Okay. Amazing. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's see if we can jump back into it. Um, Cool. So we'll go back into um, our presentation here. So like I said, um, yeah, let's just try and do some basic string manipulation. Um, what we can do, we can go back in that spreadsheet. And like I said, let's try and get everything to the left of the at symbol. Um, so I'll just say in Google Sheets, uh, make a form formula to get everything to the left of the at symbol uh, in, let's just say, cell A2, uh, since that's where it starts in our spreadsheet. OK, so it's responding here. And uh, it's basically giving us a formula that we can use to get everything to the left of that at symbol. And uh, it kind of gives an explanation of how it works as well. So it's giving us this formula, and then it's kind of breaking it down. Um, so we can copy and paste. I'll just copy that code here. 
and I'll paste it in this cell and we can see that it pasted that formula and it knows to get everything to the left of the at symbol uh, there and then you know we can just drag that down um, to, to copy that formula so pretty helpful with uh, something like this I had another example in spreadsheets but I'm going to be pretty brief here and move on just for the, the sake of time um, because the presentation title had from emails to code so I want to make sure to show some code and uh, this presentation as well. Um, this might be our last demo here um, before we uh, move on uh, for questions. So, uh, so this will be the, the yeah the last demo here. Um, going back to the person API, like I said, that's an API for um, getting person data. Um, and one question we get a lot is whether we provide clients to use the person API. Um, we we don't currently, but I'll I'll show an example of how you can generate one using ChatGPT. Um, so this is the Person API. Um, you know, it, it operates over HTTP, and it will it will return uh, a structure that we've documented um, for getting person data. So here's the URL to get that um, API that slash people, um, and then here's what the response looks like. So we have an example response here. So let's let's use this stuff to ask it to write code to call the person API um, using Python. So I'll ask it, uh, please write a Python script to call the person API at this URL. And then um, the person API uses what's called OAuth2 for authentication. So we'll say use OAuth2 client credentials for authentication. Um, and then, then lastly, we'll say uh, parse the email address out of this response. So, and then I'll, I'll paste that uh, example JSON uh, person API response there. And we can see it has email address in the attributes. So as long as this is still working. Um, so here it is. Uh, it's responding and it's uh, basically writing the Python code to call the person API. Um, it has a section, you know, it puts in that URL that I put in for the person API. Um, it makes a request to get the token. Um, it uh, then it puts that token into a, another request, and then it calls the person API using that URL, and then it gets the email address because I asked it to parse the email address, and you can see it's getting that data. Um, it based on the example response I pasted in, it knows how to get that email address, um, and then it prints it out, and then it has some more information here below. All right, I know I kind of skimmed through that, but um, apologies <laughs> for uh, kind of the technical difficulties there. Um, do we have time for questions? <laughs> hey, we've got a minute or so. Uh, I didn't see any, a lot of comments in the chat, didn't see too many questions. Um, have you used it to write articles? I know you showed summarizing. Have you? Oh yeah, I I haven't personally. Um, I was actually going to show uh, an example of it summarizing an article. Uh, I, I I do sometimes use it for outlines, uh, which I think it's really good for. Like, give me an outline for this this type of uh, article. But in terms of like generating the article itself, um, it's that's not something I'd use it for. But it certainly can do it. Um, you know, it, it, actually, I should uh, I should just briefly go through my uh, my best practices. Um, uh, which, you know, one of the things I was saying was using use, to use it as a starting point um, and as a learning tool. So, like I said, it, it can generate full articles, uh, full emails, um, you know, but it's it. I think it's really more helpful as a starting point and as a learning tool. Um, and then another thing I'll mention too, especially in the case of code, is to kind of test and and verify, um, you know, the code it's giving you to make sure it's working. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave this <laughs> that on the screen, um, but yeah, happy to answer any more questions. Well, 
one I'm more sure. from Dana. Do you use your NetID Microsoft account or do you use a personal one? I think you said you're using the free version and not a paid version. Yeah, that's correct. I'm, I was just using the free version. Um, as you could probably tell, it, it deprioritizes you if you're using the free one. Um, but um, but yeah, it, it's just done with my own personal account. Um, the other thing I'll mention there too, one of the best practices is um, only provide public data. That's probably pretty obvious, but everything you put in that text prompt is going back to their servers. So um, yeah, just make sure you're just putting public data in there. Then, uh, have you used tokens uh, for summarizing longer texts? I'm not actually sure what that's referring to. I, I know tokens as a, a concept in AI, but I'm not sure what, what context is referred to here. Someone wants to clarify that. Yeah, it's Nick's question. And I don't know if he's got time to reply or not but uh we are also uh unfortunately oh nick's replied too many tokens is a frequent error when i ask to summarize longer text hmm. uh, okay yeah i haven't um i haven't ran into that i mean like i said i think 3.5 can take like 3000 words of context so maybe if you do more than that it will throw an error but i personally haven't ran into that issue okay um and with that i think uh we're out of time for questions um again this session is being recorded and will be available on the it pro conference website uh in about a week or so um, let me stop the recording.